barking. Let's talk barking. I know it's a touchy subject. Uh, it is causing some of you a bit of um, stress and anxiety. Um, and so I'm here to help uh, try and help you get over this. And it's uh, going to take a few days to see probably a considerable amount of um, a change in your beagle, but it's well worth it. Um, and it's something that if you do consistently, um, then you'll reap the benefits and you'll reap the benefits for the rest of your beagle's life. So barking, barking, attention seeking barking, that's what I'm talking about. So I bark and I get what I want. And that can be anything from I bark and you play with me. I bark and you let me in the back door. I bark um, manically in my crate and you let me out. And now what it is, is your dog has started off really subtly. So they would have, they would have barked and, and you would have given them something, maybe a treat or something. And they've processed that, they've put it into their brain and they've realised that that's, um, that's, that's actually a really good behaviour. So do you know what, I'm going to try that again and again and again and again. Until it's so reinforced in their psyche that they um, use it as their go-to behaviour. But instead of um, only doing it quietly, <laughs> they do it really, really loudly and it does get in our brains just smidgy bit so uh what to do um and i'm afraid it is what you think i'm going to say and it is ignoring the barking and engaging with them when they're quiet so you need to you need to tackle this uh like you're training you, you are you know you're going to be training for the next week or so um and i'll give you an example so crates crates most dogs beagles they love their crates so you put them in their crates at night time they sleep but you try to do the same thing during the day and your dog um, it doesn't want to be away from you it's also daylight and they're like nah I'm not having this I'm going to bark 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 until you let me out and then nine times out of ten we do because especially if they're babies and puppies we feel um, like oh, they're going to be really distressed and they are there is an element of distress there but there's also an element of trying to get them to realize that actually you know being away from you isn't a bad thing and that they can still settle so um, barking in crates this is how I do it um, and how it works really effectively, especially when I have boarders and daycare that come. So um, we ignore the marking. And unfortunately, when I did this with, with a puppy beagle recently who loved her crate and then eventually got to about nine months and was like, no, 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 I don't want to be in my crate during the day because there's so much more going on outside. You know, I want to play. So she would bark and bark and bark and bark and bark. Now, that first day, it was an hour. <laughs> it was an hour. Um, and I do have the patience of a saint. Um, I think that might be my policing background. I can pretty much... Um, wait around for most things um, and she so I literally had to wait and wait and wait and then she did have pockets of quiet and initially you you are not waiting for two or three minutes of quiet it could be seconds so three four five seconds and that's when you approach the crate um, and if they then go back to barking you turn around and you walk away from the crate um, and then again you wait for that pocket of silence and then as soon as they're silent for maybe one, two, three seconds you start walking towards the crate again and then again if they start barking you turn around and you walk away now you might have to do this a few times before your dog, your puppy realises oh actually he comes towards me when I'm quiet but he goes away when I bark so when you eventually can get to the crate you want to just do one command okay? because you need to tell your dog what you want them to do and that is sit if your dog knows how to sit and you want them to sit and um and they and they when they sit they can still bark um so you walk away from the crate and then when you walk back you don't need to tell them to sit again because you need them to make up make that decision for themselves so you could stand there and wait for them to sit or you could walk away it's up to you I tend to at that point and probably because I've been doing this a while I will stand by the crate ignore them and then wait for them to sit and to be quiet and um, that's the key you want them to pop themselves in that sit position but you want them to be quiet as well so if they do pop themselves in that sit position but they're still barking you walk away from the crate wait for that moment of silence and walk back again let them make their decision to sit down let them make that decision to be quiet 
when you've got to that point, um, and it can it can work quite quickly in your first training session, so it might take you five to ten minutes to get to this point of you having to go to the crate, walk away from the crate, um, and do it in stages. When they are quiet and sitting, you can then try to open the gate. If they try to fly out the gate, you shut the gate, and then they might go back to barking. Um, and at this stage, I do just stand there and wait for them to sit again and to be quiet. And once they sit and they're quiet, I'll open the door again. If they try to zoom out the door, the door gets shut again. Um, and usually I've got, they do this maybe three, four, five times and then eventually they sit and they're quiet and the door is open and they're not moving. And then you use your command word, I use out and I use my hands out and then they come out. And initially I would do that quite quickly. So I've managed to get them to be quiet, they're sitting, the door is open, out then over time you can extend that. So you're teaching your beagle impulse control so that they, they don't just rush out and they just don't just do everything really, really quickly. So that's what you're doing. Um, and then you do that consistently. So even if you're in the house and they're howling and barking the place down, potter around um, and then wait for those pockets of silence when you're ready to let them out of the crate because you might wanna go upstairs and have a shower. You might need to do some housework and that might last 30 minutes. So when you're ready to let them out of the crate, then you start to wait for that pocket of silence and do this training with them. Um, and it's the same with things like when they're outside and they're barking to come inside. Uh, I train my dogs that uh, the only way they get to come inside is if they're sat by my back door and they're quiet. And again, that is literally I stand by the back door and I let them make the decision. And they usually make the decision to sit because they've learned that sit is a positive thing because we've taught our dogs to sit through positivity, treat, reward based training. So they think, oh, if I sit, I'll get what I want. And that's what you're looking for. So when I stand by the door with my hand on the, on the handle and Billy is bark, 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 barking, I don't look at him, although I've got him out the corner of my eye so I can see what's going on. I wait for him to sit. Now he has a habit of still barking when he's sitting. So I have to wait for him to, to be quiet. Um, so he'll sit and he'll be quiet and I open the door and it's like a viper quick 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 because what I'm teaching him then is is that if you sit and you're quiet you get let you get let in and then as time went on I was able to extend those periods of quiet so he would sit and he would be quiet and maybe we'd get to about 10 seconds and then I would let him in so he still has his moments because um, unfortunately Billy's a little bit scarred uh, um, but the majority of the time when I go out to the kitchen I've let him out I go into the, go to the kitchen I come back and he's sitting quietly by the back door so you use that process with literally every situation like like I have a, a neighbor who has a dog and my god I don't know how they do this but they take it out onto the field outside and it's and what it's doing is I've learned that if I bark, 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 you throw the ball so oh, I'm <laughs> So my, um, my thing now is that I would have the ball in my hand and they could bark, 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 bark as long as they wanted in front of me, but that second that they're quiet, I throw the ball. That's the key. And then come back, give me the ball, bah, 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 <gasps> throw the ball. And then what that's doing is changing um, her brain to, oh, okay, so I don't, she don't, she don't throw the ball when I bark, she throws it when I'm quiet. And then you end up changing that um, that brain neural pathway so that eventually she never barks. Um, and as much as I'd love to help my uh, neighbours, I've all learnt through experience, you wait for the person to come to you if they want guidance. So there we go. So give that a go. I hope it helps. Uh, it's definitely helped in my house. It helps on a daily basis with my boarders and my daycare. Um, the regulars have already, uh, their barking is considerably lower because they know that I am, um, I don't, I don't give them any attention. Um, and also when I have um, boarders on new daycare dogs, they pretty much are better by the end of the day because they've, they've realised that it doesn't work for them. So yeah, I hope um, that helps you. Beagles were bred to bark. Um, so we just have to train them that barking is, is not what we want and the quiet is what we want. So yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs>